the feel of it was almost like cotton wool is to some people. The feel of it rubbing against my thumbs as I knit was the hey. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Midnight Diary channel. My name is Gemma and I'm so pleased to welcome you into my home again this week. I'm back with another video podcast episode. I really wasn't too minds about what to do this week. Um, I've got the Devon Diaries vlog to edit from when my friend Lee came to visit way back at the beginning of March. <laughs> I've put off editing it because I want, I want to do it justice and I've not really had the time or brain space. But anyway, so I've got that and I thought, well, I could do that. So I don't really know how much I've got to talk about this week. Turns out I've got loads to talk about to the point that I've had to make notes. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. If you are new here, you're most welcome. My name's Gemma. As I said, I am run The Midnight Diary, which is on a kind of half hiatus at the moment. It's a bit weird, but you know, you'll see more about that in my other video. So I'm not going to go all into that at the moment. Um, I also, <laughs> we live in Devon, been here for eight months. I craft, I knit, I sew-ish, um, I crochet, and I teach. I'm actually teaching at Will on the X this coming Saturday. This isn't a plug because it is sold out again, which is very exciting, very exciting. Um, doesn't feel real, actually, that people are so excited about my classes that I'm selling out, but there we are. Anyway, just pinch myself and then suffer casually from imposter syndrome, as I'm sure we all want to do. Um, yeah. So anyway, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Um, as you can tell, I'm slightly tired, slightly delirious, and this may contain more than the usual levels of nonsense. So strap yourself in, kids. We're going to have some fun tonight. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I've got so much to talk to you about. I'm going to kind of, it's going to kind of be a normal podcast episode, but it's going to flip back and forth between various things. So let's start off first of all with finished objects. I have two finished objects for you this week. I have completely completed Jude's socks. There's one. Um, and I keep calling it heart and soul, but it's head over heels. So there's one. And, you know, for, for receipts, there's two. So they are fraternal, fraternal twins rather than identical twins. There we are. It's almost there. If you've watched previous episodes, um, you'll know that I was trying to get these to match. Um, but Jude's sock takes just over two repeats of the pattern, the colourway. And my son's socks takes just over one. So after I did my son's first sock, I gave it up as a bad job and decided to just go for it. You'll notice there's a single line of colour at the top. And that's because um, I am a big fan of Helen of Giddy Yarns. And I was watching one of her vlogs a couple of years ago. And she was explaining that when she knits with self-striping, um, to ensure you get full repeats, when she's doing her long tail cast on, she actually does... She, well, she does actually go until the first change um, in the yarn because the first colour in the yarn might not be a full repeat because obviously it's the end of skein. Um, so if you go to where the colours change and, and meet up, um, which you can't really see on either of these socks with the way I've done it, um, no, there's nothing, no way of me showing you really. Um, but if you do that then you end up with just the line of one colour, in this case the cream at the top of the sock, and then the um, a full stripe of the next colour. What's my cat up to? Good night. What you doing? What you doing? Hi. So there's that, and I also have to go with them somewhere. Oh, there we are my son's socks so they match um, and these also do not match they nowhere near match so there we are they look a bit different because this one I've got facing you head-on and this one is presented sideways sorry sideways so you can see the heel flap so I'm using my basic vanilla sock pattern that um, I've not got on my website, or sorry, not my website anymore. I've not got on Payhip anymore because I'm editing it to include better instructions and photography 
Um, I've been doing that for ages, or I've been saying I'm doing that for ages. In, in truth, I haven't had a chance to get around to it, but I'm hoping this summer will be the time I do that. Um, in time for one of my big ideas that's going to happen. Hooray! Um, yeah, and standard heel flap and gusset, and I'm a bit old-fashioned, really. I try them on as I go. I use magic loop or two circular socks. Um, two circular needles methods to knit my socks. I'm not a fan of DPNs. Um, I have learnt to use them, but to me it feels like wrestling a hedgehog and the hedgehog always wins. Anyway, so I bought this yarn from Spinny Yarn in Bovey Tracy and I do have some video vlog footage of that beautiful shop um, that I will show you when I eventually publish the Lee Diaries vlog. Um, I liked it so much that I bought two skeins. There's another one just sort of sitting. Boop, boop, that's it there. Um, and when I popped back in last Wednesday, when I was on a rare date with my husband, date day, I popped in and I couldn't resist bringing another ball home with me, which at the moment is wrapped up in tissue because I'm undecided as to whether I'm going to be very good and just give the ball of yarn to Duke so he can knit his own socks or whether I'm going to knit him another pair, which means I'll be knitting him three pairs, I think. But anyway, lucky, lucky man, what can I say? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's finished object. No, it's not. I'm lying to you. I've also got, where is it? I don't have it. No. Right. Imagine this is a face cloth, not a jumper. There you go, a face cloth. I had lots of this yarn, which is Starcraft Love You. I had lots of this yarn left over from my cable baby sweater, which as I say is not a dishcloth, it's my cable baby sweater. And still not woven in, never mind, don't come at me. Who's got time to weave in it? <laughs> um, um, but the yarn I bought from Wells Knitting Centre, yeah, Wells Knitting Centre in Somerset, um, was a different dye lot. And rather than risking the dye lots not matching, I thought what I would do instead is um, use up the leftovers from my original baby jumper into um, face cloths, no, washcloths, because um, someone knitted me some cotton washcloths when Robin was little and I still use them. So yeah, so we've got the rot the rotten face cloth, sorry, the cotton face cloth, um, which is there as well. And that's it for that's it for finished objects. And then my half object, which I did almost entirely this weekend, was the first sock of my mum. So you'll have seen this before in the sense that you'll seen the first one I did. It was my mum's birthday back in March, and I asked my aunt, who is so sweet, Samuel for um, her recipe for knitting socks for my mum, because she's knit socks for my mum before. And as I was knitting it, I thought, oh, this looks ever so small. Um, so I sent the one sock down to my mum and it didn't fit because although I'd followed my aunt's recipe, it turns out that I am much tighter when it comes to knitting socks than my aunt. So I recast on and knitted another sock. Mum also requested a shorter length leg. So again, it's my basic vanilla sock pattern. I did a 15 round cuff. I think I did a 40 round leg in the end because 35 just felt a bit too short. Standard slip stitch, heel flap and gusset. And then it's six and a half inches from the back to the start of the toe. I figured length has got to be fine. It's got to be. I am So I cast this on just before last weekend. some very strange noises coming from outside um and then in the car journey down to Essex or up to Essex we went to Essex for my aunt's 50th birthday um so sweet Samuel we've probably seen the fabulous cake if you follow her and some of the pictures of the celebrations um <laughs> I've spent my entire weekend obviously running around after Robin which is great fun um I knit most of the sock I did the heel flap heel turn and picked up for the gusset in the car and then during the party because I'm never without my knitting I did the majority of the foot and I just finished it off on the way home I got down to almost having completed the toe decreases um, 
on the way home and then yesterday a play group when Robin was playing I just kitchened the toe and cast on immediately because I'm a very good girl cast on immediately for the second sock now I am not going to have enough yarn here to do a complete second sock for my mum I am going to need that first original sock back from her at some point but there we go so works in progress um I've got I thought we'd do some crochet today. We haven't had crochet for a while, have we? It's nothing too exciting. It's my granny stripe. Um, <laughs> I've been inspired by my friend Marcus, who is Fiberpunk here on YouTube, Instagram, all the places, to pull out my granny stripe blanket again. This project started when Marcus and I did an advent swap back in the days when we were poor yarn dyers and couldn't afford buying yarn adverts and things we decided to do a scrappy swap advent and it was so much fun and there's so much thought that went into it a surprising amount of my own yarn came back to me <laughs> um which was quite good fun i've long since lost what these were because this was also in the days before i did vlogmas um and i cast on chained on cast on for a granny stripe blanket and i kind of guessed by the length of the chain how long i wanted it to be and if you're a long time viewer you've heard this a million times so i'm just going to skip to the end it's seven and a half foot wide which is very wide and makes it very slow going but seeing marcus's beautiful one and hearing the lovely things he said about it and the swap and it just made me want to work on it again so i've been pulling it out and gradually working a bit more now my stitch marker has fallen off but ooh, I can show you roughly where I was and where last time and where I've got to so I'm part way through a row because these are really super duper long rows as I've already mentioned there there's my part way through a row I've just pulled a stitch out oh and I was, I think the last time I showed it to you, I think I was down here on this kind of owly colourway. And I've now added another one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows to it. That green is so bright and cheerful. I love the randomness of this scrappy crochet blanket. I'm not being particular about finishing an entire row and then cutting off what's left. I'm going to the end of the yarn and I've made a magic knot ball I don't know if the channel still exists I know she doesn't podcast anymore really not since she's had children um but Katie of inside number 23 in one of her vlogtober videos one of her most recent ones which we're going back a few years now I say she's not really podcasting anymore um shared about how to make the, the magic ball so this is what I've got left so far it's the first one it's quite bittersweet to see it becoming smaller. I've got loads, loads more to put in though. I've got um, scrappy advents that friends have sent me and more from Marcus's one because I made two big balls rather than uh, one. So although, <laughs> although it's only that wide at the moment, it will definitely, or, or deep, it will definitely grow significantly with all my minis. I'm quite keen to get through my minis this year, actually, um, and get them all into this snuggly blanket. I would love to have this finished for this winter. It's not going to happen, though. It's been, where are we, 2019, 2021? It's been five years almost in the making, this. Yeah, it's not going to be, <laughs> it's not, but it's definitely fun pulling it out. And I'm going to try and spend some time working on it each week. It might be my video editing project, but each week, because I'm still, touch wood, you know, frantically feeling around for some wood and grasping my table leg in a completely normal fashion. <laughs> um, touch wood, I've been actually uploading a video consistently every single week for the entire of 2024 so far touch wood as I say please don't jinx it Murphy leave me alone um yeah and so therefore there is some video editing time each week which might be a good time to work on my granny stripe okay on to my next work in progress which is a super beautiful super simple baby vest I've shown the picture before but I'll open up the pattern and show it again and you're going to see a fair few of these in different yarns, which I think could be quite fun, seeing how the different yarns work up and create these different vests. But anyway, well, it's not too bad for glare tonight. Let's see. 
Uh, there. It's a funny angle, but there you go. Talking about glare, gosh, glare on my forehead. Oh, it's been a bit warm this weekend. Um, so this is Serdar pattern number 1946, and it's Snuggly Baby Crofter it's designed for. And I'm doing the vest version, the third size, which is one to two years, because I'm doing it for my husband's cousin's baby boy's first birthday, which was last week. Um, but anyway, I think if you saw my previous one, you'll know I've stopped rushing to do it because I wasn't going to see them anyway, so it was fine. And progress, not perfection. That's what we're going for. So it's not blocked or anything, and it's kind of rolling in because it's stocking stitch, but um, there it is. There's the back of the vest. I love the kind of the subtlety of the odd bits of colour, and it almost looks deliberate, it almost looks like crisscrosses, but it isn't, but it is, but it isn't. I really like it. I love the finished fabric of this. I hate working with it. I really don't enjoy working with it. I'm going to go into that in a little bit more detail um, shortly. Um, but yeah, so this weekend, this Monday, one of my targets was to cast on the front. And this is what I did yesterday. So there we are. So that kind of brings me to, um, we're not done with whips, but it brings me to one of the things I wanted to chat about today, which is a bit of a cotton yarn review. We are entering warmer weather, certainly here in the Northern Hemisphere. I'm not sure what's going on in the Southern Hemisphere. Never been there. Hope you've got some nice weather. Um, but obviously your thoughts turn to summer makes. And I know folk think that knitting might just be a winter sport. That's fine. I know a lot of people like to get out in the garden and go on walks and do other things in the summer, myself included, that's fine. Um, but lots of people's thoughts turn then to summery yarns and cotton is kind of an obvious one. Socks I knit all year round. I don't get sweaty fingers knitting them and they're an all year round project. To be honest, I knit all things all year round. I really don't care about the weather outside. However, I thought having knit so much in cotton recently, it would be a good time to review some of the cotton yarns I've used. And I have got one two, three, one, two, three, four cotton yarns to review for you. Um, I did have a fifth. Oh, I found my washcloth. Hang on. There we are. There's my first washcloth, my little face cloth for a little baby. Hooray. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've got four co um, cotton yarns to review for you. There is a cotton sock yarn that I've started using as well, but I can't find it. So I can't talk about it because it's been too long since I've knit on it. And as I can't find it, I couldn't do a couple of rows before doing this. Long-winded explanation, I know. Anyway, so let's talk about this one first. This is King Cole Cotton Soft Candy. Candy referring to the patterning on the yarn. So Cotton Soft DK comes into kind of flat shades, nice shades, don't get me wrong, but they're flat, they're solid. And then the candy kind of have these speckly colours to them. This is a ball that I bought from the yarn dispensary when we were stocking it. It feels really soft and yummy to hold in the ball. The ball itself isn't holding together brilliantly. And it doesn't matter that this is a couple of years old, this ball of yarn. Um, I store them really carefully, so it's not that. And it's not to do with how I'm knitting it, because I'm just knitting it at home. It just it yoinks out and has little bits of yarn bleh, every so often. Um, it feels great. The finished fabric, I absolutely love. It is so soft and being pure cotton, it's going to be nice and cool for little Bubba to wear over the summer. He's going to look super cute in it. I absolutely love it. Um, and actually, I do like the finished fabric enough to say that I wouldn't rule out working with this yarn again. It wouldn't be the first one I reached for but I wouldn't rule it out. So there we are. So say Cotton Soft TK from King Cole. I think it retails about three pounds a ball possibly. I'll find out the current retail price for it and pop it on the screen here for you. Really like the speckling of the candy. Love the finished object. Hate working with it. Within a few moments, and actually just holding this, my fingers felt as though they were kind of coated in something. It just felt unnatural. I don't know if it's drying out my skin or what's happening to it, but I just, it really gave me 
an unpleasant feeling. Um, yeah, I'm not enjoying the process of this at all. Um, and it's a really quick knit. I can't talk to how it holds up so far in picking up stitches because cotton is notoriously um, amnesic. It doesn't have much memory. And so when you pull the stitches to pick up, it can quite often stay pulled and look a bit stretched. I haven't got to picking up the armbands yet, so I can't comment on that, but yeah. Um, as I say, I, I use the word hate really carefully. I don't often use it. It's not a lot that I really, really dislike, but I really, really dislike using this yarn. The finished, the finished thing so far though, the finished fabric, totally worth it. To the point I'd even considered an adult garment in this. I think this would make a really lovely summer cardigan for a grown up. Um, I, if I wasn't doing a yarn stash challenge, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, perhaps. If I was in a different time in my life where I was able to buy a garment's worth of yarn, then I would um, I would totally buy a garment's worth of this and use it. So there we are. That's King Cole, Cotton Soft Candy, 100% cotton, 210 metres to 100 grams produced for King Cole. So that's number one. Number two, going back in the most recent things I've done, is Stylecraft Love You. Now, um, slightly less budget friendly, four ninety five a ball, but you get a bit good bang for your buck. You've got two hundred and ten meters, a hundred grams. It's sixty percent cotton, forty percent acrylic, so a slightly different blend. Now, my first criticism of this is how splitty the yarn is. Look at how easily it wants to see here. It just wants to unwind itself, and that made it trickier when it came to doing things like the cables. Um, I had to really pay attention to it. I couldn't watch TV very easily and knit the cables. Um, and even doing the dishcloth, I found myself splitting the yarn a few times. You can see even on the cast on where I've split it. Um, so that was a criticism. To work with, it's kind of, it's not hard on the hands, but it's not as soft as like, obviously like a merino. Um, it's not the harshest cotton I've worked with on the hands either. Um, the finished fabric I like. I got gauge for the sweater that I did and I do like the finished fabric that you see there. Again, it's not as buttery soft as the King Cole Cotton Soft Candy, but the actual process of working with it, this, even with the splitting, I would say it's preferable to the feel of the Cotton Soft, but um, that's a sensory thing and sensory things are completely subjective whereas I don't know anyone who likes a splitty yarn so depending where you land on that sort of thing. Um, with regards to picking up stitches and stretch there is some stretch there as you can see. I haven't sewn this up so I haven't done anything with the underarms yet. Um, <clears throat> I say picking up stitches this is just increases. It is quite bouncy it's quite a dense yarn, so it's less easy to use than a DK or four ply cotton. This is an Aran weight cotton. Um, I, which for a baby garment was slightly tricky, I decided to go for a six to 12 month size for the two summer babies that are due, because then they could wear it through the autumn season and into winter, and depending on their size, it might even fit them a little bit beyond that. So it's got the durability there. For adults who can't use, um, animal fibers very easily because either you aren't sure about them from kind of like a, a vegan perspective um although if you're coming at it from an eco-friendly perspective cotton has a huge carbon footprint but we're not going to get into all that um it could be that you are allergic that you, you react your skin reacts to animal fibers i know some people react to the lanolin lanolin in fibers this would make a fab fab because it's aran weight um option for your woolly or not woolly winter wardrobe um again i think the weight of it is quite pleasing i think in a in a jumper an adult's jumper it may well hang it may well end up because it does it is quite weighty i don't know what it would do my my gut tells me it would actually kind of hang down and stretch out which could give it a really nice line that could be really nice i think the blue jumper that i showed you last time could look really nice in this as well the one that my mum knit with the kind of lattice work i think that could work really nicely in this um 
I'm not sure about all over cables. I think the cables held up relatively well. You don't get too much stretch between the stitches. So yeah. So that is number two. Um, and again, although it was splitty and a bit of a pain, the process and the finished item were good enough that when my sister-in-law saw it and went, yes, please, I'd like one, I did not mind buying more and casting it on for my soon-to-be niece. Um, yeah, so, and as I say, with the leftovers, I'm just doing washcloths, which actually works out really rather well because you can kind of see the patterning of the arm. So there's that. Right, number three is um, this is one of my favorites for finished results. Um, but it, again, it doesn't rate too highly on my actual working with it um, score. This is Rowan Denim Revive. It's kind of pricey. You get 50 gram balls. You're looking at six something, I think it was when I was buying it. Um, I will pop the price again and the information. It's recycled denim and cotton. The result is a beautifully flecked yarn. I really like it. The weight and drape is really nice. I've knit a couple of garments in this. Uh, there's one that I knit with someone who worked with me. Um, they did the majority of the knitting um, and I did the kind of the icky bits, the picking up and things. I did not enjoy grafting the shoulders together um, and picking up was nowhere near as bad as I thought. I was dreading picking up in cotton around the neckline. It was a V-neck because again, because of the stretch that I find cotton often has. Although it wasn't my favorite to work with because it was quite hard on my hands, some delicate flower, what can I say? Um, the finished result was great. And I now knit four dishcloths with it as well. So it's good for garments and for dishcloths. It's a very, bougie <laughs> dishcloth to be fair you know I can get two dishcloths um out of a ball of this so two dishcloths for six pounds whatever it is is um a little bit extra I certainly wouldn't pay that much for them in a, in a supermarket but uh but yeah and they hold up really well they're great although I'm using these dishcloths they're not scratchy they're it's not scratchy it's quite nice to wear against the skin as well and it comes in a range of nice colors um I think they've added some more vibrant colors recently um the pistachio this one was definitely my favorite the rest were the original palette was was all predictably was blues like stone washed and dark and all kind of the denim jeans colors but then they started adding some pops of color in as well to the range which was quite nice all right my final one, I don't have a current product. Well, I do, but I've buried it somewhere and I wasn't going to wake my baby up to find it. Um, and this is, I think, oh, I'm, so, I'm really struggling to say whether it's my favourite or not. Um, hmm. Really struggling with this one. I love using it. I do. I enjoy using it. It's not hard on your hands at all. The finished project has lovely sheen and drape um it doesn't wash up as soft as i would hope this one and it is rowan summer light dk again these are 50 gram balls you get 130 meters um rowan's quite a peculiar brand it doesn't unless it says it's dk or four ply it's its own sweet thing the reason being it wants you to use their own patterns. It makes it very hard to substitute yarns. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but you've got to do your tension swatch and all that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, I knit the little cardigan that I showed off a couple of episodes ago. I'll put some pictures up here for my son. It was so popular. Um, it was also chosen as the yarn for the same top um, that I did in the denim, or helped do in the denim revive. Um, but other customers did it as well. I can't show those pictures here because obviously I don't have permission. But if you popped onto the Yarn Dispensary Instagram and scroll back to a couple of summers ago, you'll see a few of them. Um, and the finish is just so nice. It's kind of silky. It's almost got a little bit of a sheen to it. It's really, really nice to use. The colours are great. It doesn't split. It washes up well, not as soft as I would hope. I would think probably a hand wash wouldn't be a bad idea with this, even though it's cotton um egyptian cotton Ooh la la but there you are 
Um, so yeah, those are my kind of reviews. You've got budget friendly, not so budget friendly. Um, oh, if you want to talk linen, I did the Soho uh, top last last summer in the Creative Linen. Didn't enjoy using it. It was so hard on my hands, but the finished piece was really nice. Again, really heavy, but really nice. So there we are. I think I'm generally not a fan of cottons because they do feel quite hard on my hands, but I'm open to trying new ones. It's the same as years ago. I thought I couldn't use wool because the Robin, you know, the 400 gram balls of Aran weight yarn, which is Aran with wool, it's like 20% wool content of indeterminate origin, which was probably something with quite a short staple length and quite a few microns. And it was probably quite rough. The the feel of it was almost like cotton wool is to some people. The feel of it rubbing against my thumbs as I knit was the hey. Yeah. And even though I'm an avid knitter now and use wool a lot, thinking back to my experience of using that yarn when I was in my late teens, early 20s, still makes me go. Ugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we are. There we are. So that's my kind of cotton yarns review for you. Um, what cotton yarns or plant-based yarns or summer yarns have you used and would like to um, share? Do let me know if there's any you'd recommend. Um, I love my merino tent cell base. Tent cell being a plant fiber, it's squashed wood pulp. It's quite eco-friendly. Um, obviously, it's merino tent cell. It's got a beautiful drape and sheen. I absolutely love it. I don't have anything to show you with it, though, so I, I shan't wax lyrical about it too much. But do let me know below what your favourite ones are. OK, back to works in progress. So, <clears throat> as I've mentioned, it was my aunt's 50th, that's Five zero birthday at the weekend and we took the long journey it took us nine hours to get there up to Essex to see my family to visit my daughter and to um, see and plant her up and to see my aunt celebrate her birthday so um, I wanted to make my aunt something special for her birthday and I was really struggling to know what to do. And it kind of crept up on me really quickly because I've had a really busy April. And I knew, I mean, I knew her birthday was coming. It's the same time every year. It's like Christmas. But how often are we prepared for Christmas? There we go. Um, <laughs> I wanted to make something special. I was really struggling to settle on what. So I spent an afternoon, I was tidying my bookcase, which is out of shot, but it's got all my patterns and things in. And I was going through magazine files. Now, I wanted to buy new magazine files because these have broken but needs must, beggars can't be choosers, and so I've opted instead to repair them with some artistically placed sticky tape. <laughs> so when I was repairing them, I took the opportunity to take everything out and go through and have a look. And that's when I finally found what I wanted to make for my aunt. Okay. In this very stylish Wilco food and freezer bag, <laughs> I have my cross stitch project. So this is from Cross Stitcher May 2011. So we're going back a few years here. Um, and it's so sweet. So you've got a cushion here with beautiful fabrics and bunting. And on the back, I'm going to fold it over so you can't see the chart, so we'll be careful about this, is a bag version. Now, who doesn't love a project bag? I thought a project bag was doable. My aunt's aesthetic is very much this. It's calf kidston, it's pink, it's shabby chic, it's bunting, it's mismatched china, it's uh, all those beautiful things that I love and she loves. And so I thought this was perfect. It was just enough stitching that I thought I could get it done within the week and get my sewing machine out and get these bits done. Um, it would have worked had I not forgotten that I haven't got my sewing machine out since I've lived here. Um, I'm at the stage of sewing together, machine sewing my English paper piece of project, which I've been putting off, but I'll talk more about that later. Um, and I suddenly realised I didn't know where the needles were, where the pins were, where anything was. And kind of almost had a mini meltdown on the Friday. I was like, this isn't going to happen. So in the end, I plucked for just finishing back in the suitcase. And my aunt has been very understanding. So I raided my box of 
floss, which my aunt actually gave me when she kind of stopped cross stitching years ago. She gave me all her half finished cross stitches, um, some, some of which are more complete than others. And she gave me a big box of cross stitch floss. Um, bet she's regretting that now because she's having to buy it all again because she's rediscovered cross stitch. Anyway, I went stash diving in my box and I came up with some Ada and I picked some colours that are slightly different to the picture, not very, but slightly, just a bit softer and a bit more my aunt's aesthetics. You've got kind of a sagey green and a an duck egg blue and a pale rose pink and a kind of rhubarb pink as well, what I call a, a rhubarb or a rose hip pink. Um, so the bunting is pretty much finished. I just have to do the back stitching. And for the fabrics, I have picked these. Again, very much my aunt, very Kath kidston -y. So I've got my back, my back fabric, my back part of my bag. And these are all left over from my English paper piecing project that I'm doing. So you've got the green. And I can't remember, these are the handles, I think. I think those are the handles. Or are those side panels and those are handles? Can't remember. Let's see. They're different lengths, whatever they are, they're different lengths. Handles are longer. Right, there you go. Right, so I've got that for the handles and that for the, ooh, the back. And then I've got bottom and no, and then I've got side panels and bottom. I'm not entirely sure what I've done really. I've But I cut out all my fabric and got it all ready and all organized. So I think that's going to look absolutely beautiful. And I've really enjoyed cross stitching again. Um, I struggled a bit on the Friday because I'd been at work at the day job for a couple of days. Um, it's gonna get really confusing because I've got three and a half jobs at the moment. So <laughs> my main day job is working in a tea rooms in a cafe. So that means a lot of using of chemicals again. We use the D10 disinfectant for the tables. And obviously I do a lot of washing up um, and a lot of hand washing in general for general hygiene. And the result is that my skin isn't particularly happy. It's actually doing really well today because um, it's been a few days without, where are we now, Tuesday. So I haven't worked since Thursday. So five days without it. And my fingers feel so soft and smooth and they're not stained and it's great. Um, but on Friday, my hands were so badly calloused and my skin was so dry and cracked that I kept unthreading my own needle when I was cross-stitching, which was super frustrating. <laughs> I really enjoy cross-stitching again. I would like to get back into it. I have a fair few unfinished cross-stitches that my aunt gave me. I don't think I've got any. I've only got one unfinished cross-stitch. Um, for some reason with cross-stitch, I'm mon monogamous. Mono, 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 mono. Put the teeth in, try again. Monogamous. Hmm, there we go, got it. Uh, yeah, for some reason with cross stitch, I'm monogamous. Hmm, got it twice. And uh, I, I do one project in its entirety. The only exception is if I'm doing a gift. So I was working on a big one for a number of years and did wedding samplers in the meantime, but they're time sensitive. But I really enjoyed it. I took an afternoon and just did some slow stitching and enjoyed the process and it felt really relaxing. It was nice to do something different. My hands hurt after a while, I definitely need to use a frame. I've got really weirdly bendy fingers. They sort of, can you see? They sort of do weird things. And so when I'm holding a cross stitch hoop, my little finger in particular always kind of pushes back and it gets quite painful. Um, so yeah, but talking about the love of cross stitch, the light is better, the days are much longer, my time is much more my own, I'm feeling so good in myself, so happy in myself. Robin is settling better in the evenings as he's getting a bit older and he's still waking up fairly early, but I think if I tried I could wake up before him and I want to do the 100 day project. I did this a few years ago and every day for 100 days, I did one kind of strand of cross stitch in its entirety. So by which I mean one, if I loaded my needle with floss, 
I would use all that length that I'd loaded for the day. So I did 100 days, a little bit of cross stitch every day for 100 days. And I got my cross stitch finished. And I have a beautiful and very, very special cross stitch on a frame at the moment. And it is still wrapped up in the bin bags from where it's been since we moved. I didn't actually touch it for the longest time before the move because when Robin was born, I really didn't do any. So I haven't touched it in two years. It's a beautiful full coverage cross stitch from Heaven and, Heaven and Earth Designs. Now full coverage means every single square within this picture is covered with cross stitch. Some you get like bits on the edges that aren't done, some you get print cross stitch where you just cross stitch little highlighted bits on a kind of artistically printed background. This is full coverage. This is corner to corner, frame to frame, edge to edge, complete cross stitch. It's intense. It's on very fine Ada. <laughs> I think it's, am I using 24 count Ada? It's really fine. It's very tiny. The pattern itself is 18 A4 pages and I've done one page already and it amounts to about this much cross stitch. It's a very, very special one. Um, I should actually just show it. Here we go, here it is. Ta-da. It's a very special cross stitch and a very special project because it was for my then boss, but still very good friend, Vanessa's 70th birthday. I think it was her 70th. It was never gonna get done for them. Um, and like lots of things, it's just completely fallen by the wayside. I then started the classic thing of beating myself up and feeling really guilty about it, but there we are. I've bought all the 180 colors for it, or however many it was, something crazy like that. And I'm gonna get it out again. I'm going to do the 100 day project. So the 100 day project was a concept brought up by this person here, if I can find out who it is. And the idea is simply that you do something creative every day for 100 days. It could be 100 days of pencil drawings. It could be um, 100 days of baking. It could be 100 days of watercolor painting. It could be 100 days of trying 100 different things. You know, um, Some people do it for 100 days of language learning or book reading or other things. But initially the idea was something creative carving out time for yourself and that is what I'm going to do I'm going to be doing the 100 day project so there's going to be a new mini series coming up um I don't know if I'm going to do it as shorts and upload it every day um but there's going to be a little video of maybe a weekly video I don't know no idea how I'm going to do it yet but of the progress happening then there'll be a fast forwarded almost time lapse thing at the end I've got no idea if 100 days is going to be enough to get this cross stitch done, but I'm sure enough going to make a big dent into it. And I really, really hope that that's something you would enjoy. If you're going to do a 100 days project, if you were going to take time out every day for 100 days to do something creative like this, what would it be? Let me know in the comments below. So I've got a couple of things there. Lastly, of course, how are you getting on with the Crack Those Whips Cal? It's something we're just doing for fun, finishing up some works in progress before getting ready to cast on all the exciting things for winter 2024. Let me know below. I'm going to stop whispering on, let you get on with your day. Thank you for spending time with me again, and I hope to see you very soon. Take care. Bye.